Wagoner's Walk. Sunday morning at Minden Road found Peter hard at work. <laughs> There. That's that. So it's time for the vegetables to go on. Chicken's in the oven, and the trifle's ready to go in the fridge. Mmm. Very nice, too. Looks like a colour photo from a recipe book. Mm. The girls love it if you sprinkle hundreds and thousands on top, by the way. Ah, <sighs> okay. No sherry in it, though. I'm sure, I do get rather bored with producing nursery meals all the time. Oh, never mind. We'll give a dinner party one night and you can make a proper grown-up trifle and we'll all get happily sloshed. It's funny, isn't it, the way things change? When I was a kid, we used to eat what father liked. Nowadays, we eat what our children like. I feel as if I've missed out somewhere along the line. <laughs> Poor old Peter. I don't suppose it was much fun being brought up by Arthur. Oh, he didn't bring me up. He was away most of the time in the war. How did you get on with him when he was there? Oh, I don't know. I suppose I loved him in a funny way. It was all mixed up, you know. Anger, guilt. Floyd would have had a field day. Hmm. Some things don't change. What do you mean? Well, look how you were when you came back from visiting him on Thursday. Seething with rage and riddled with guilt. Both at once. Yes, that's true. He does have that effect on me, I admit. Thank goodness I'm not scared of him anymore. I used to be, when I was Jeremy's age. And that's because you're sorry for him instead. I wonder if Jeremy will be talking like this about me one day to his wife. By the way, talking of parents and children, did I tell you about the new series I'm doing for the woman's page? Oh, I don't think so. Oh, I probably did, and you weren't listening. Mothers and Daughters. We're running a series of interviews with the daughters of famous mothers. Oh, well, that's, that's different. But it's fathers and sons who create the real habit. Don't you believe it? I've just been to see an old dear in Golders Green whose mother was one of the original die-hard suffragettes, mm -hmm. Mrs Pankhurst's right-hand woman. Oh. And some of the stories she told me about her home life would make your hair curl. Well, a few more years with father, and I doubt if I'll have any hair left to curl. Well, at least you're talking of a few more years now. When you first went into hospital, you were talking in terms of weeks or even days. Oh, you probably outlived a lot of us. I wish you could come with me this afternoon, darling. Oh, Peter, I would if I could, but we can't leave the children all on their own. Well, Mrs. McBride did say she'd always take them in an emergency. I know, but this isn't an emergency. Mm. You'll just have to give him my love and, and explain. Yes, all the same. I, I do wish you were coming, too. Was that the phone just now, Claire? Yes. I didn't call you because I thought you were still in the bath. Uh, somebody for me? For both of us. It was Tony. I said you'd ring him back later. Uh, what did he want, did he say? Bad news, I'm afraid. He heard from his solicitors yesterday. About the divorce? Sonia's solicitors had been in touch with them. So, it's all going ahead, then? And they were giving Tony due warning. She intends to apply for custody of Adam. Only custody? Ah. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean that she... No, no, no. She wants the whole thing. Custody, care and control. She's gambling on getting the court to give her Adam permanently. It's terrifying. Well, she'll never get away with it. With her background, her history? Mike, huh. she is his mother. And that counts for a lot. Look, she's never looked after Adam. Now, what sort of a mother do you call that? Presumably her lawyers will say that's because she was ill, and now she's... Rubbish! Better. She's no more fit to be that child's mother than... Mike, I know. Well, you don't have to shout at me. I'm only telling you what Tony said. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Well, I still say she hasn't a hope. The facts speak for themselves. Tony can offer the child a secure, happy home. Yes, Mike, that's what I told him. Oh, yes, well... Well, I'll ring him back presently, Tony. Uh, did you say you were going to clean the car this morning? I was, but it started to rain again. Uh, is there anything I can do to help indoors? Oh, you can try and find places for these Christmas cards, if you like. Oh. The mantelpiece is much too crowded already. Oh. oh, when did these come? Yesterday. I left them on the dresser for you to see. Oh, I didn't notice. Who? <laughs> Aunt Dorothy. Yes, it's oh. rather a pretty one, isn't it? Who yeah. says so this? Robins in the snow, no less. To Mike, Claire, and Sue. From Bill. Very proper. What do you mean? All three names in order of seniority, all very correct. Well, what did you expect, for heaven's sake? Did you send him one? Of course. From all of us, all very correct. You still don't believe it, do you? Believe what? 
But you don't have to feel defensive. Well, the other night when I told you about Sophie, that wasn't why I... Yes, yes, I know. No, I'm sorry, I overreacted. But you still don't want her living here? Uh, <clears throat> well, I'd rather have the place to ourselves, but I realise she needs somewhere to live. And since you've already suggested it to Rob... I only put it forward as a possibility. I asked how he and Dickon would feel about her sharing their sitting room and kitchen if we let her have the studio. So far, nothing's been decided? Of course not. Oh, I don't think Rob's had a chance to talk to Dickon. The weekend's always his busiest time. But even if they say yes, I wouldn't offer the room to Sophie if you're dead against it. You know that. Well, um, well, let's wait and see what the boys decide, shall we? After all, it'll affect them more than me, really. And presumably it won't be forever. Yes. All right. Uh, yeah, well, I think I'll put these cards uh, yeah, along the edge of the bookshelves, I think. Bit of a nuisance when you want to get one of the books, but... Hello, Nicola Gould. Oh, yes, wasn't that nice of her? Well, why didn't you tell me Nicola had sent us a card? Well, I left them all out for you to see. Yeah, but I've been trying to get in touch with her. I told you, she's moved out of London. But she's put her address on the back. She's living in the West Country. Yeah. Now. Yes, in Bath. And there's a phone number. Good. I'll give her a call. What, now? I thought you were going to ring Tony. Hmm? Oh, yes, I will. I will. Uh, later on. Don't forget to ask her how Becky is. No, no, I won't. Hello, Nicola. It's Mike Nash. Ah. Oh, very well. How are you? Good. Uh, well, Claire and I were only just saying we wondered what had happened to you. Yeah, and then your card turned up out of the blues. <laughs> Well, funnily enough, I tried to call you this week at your old number. Now, look, Nicola, do you ever manage to get up to London at all these days? Father? Uh, uh, what? Uh, oh, Peter. I'm sorry, were you asleep? Well, of course I wasn't asleep. Just resting your eyes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm. Sometimes you treat me as if I was in my dotage. I'm not in the habit of dozing off in the middle of the... Uh, what time is it? It's afternoon visiting time. Yes, yes, of course I know that. Sunday afternoon. Uh, uh, well, it is Sunday, isn't it? That's right. How are you today, Father? Oh, don't ask me. How should I know? You'd have to ask the great Panjandrum, the specialist. It's as much as I can do to get half a dozen words out of the man. But how are you feeling in yourself? Well, how do you expect me to feel? I've been very ill. Very ill indeed. Yes, I, I know that, Father. But you're looking much more your old self today. Oh, you think so? Hmm. Well, I get tired so easily. Very tired. I'm afraid it'll be a long time before I'm back on my feet again. A very long time. Uh, I had hoped I might be out of here before Christmas. But it seems highly unlikely now. Well, you're in the best place. You still need looking after, you know. The best place? What an idiotic thing to say. I want to get back to my own place. My own bed. My own chair. Well, I promise you, just as soon as you're well enough... Oh, yes, yes, I dare say. I want to get out of this institution. What's the weather like today? Oh, it's a bit grey, overcast. Oh, you can see. All I can see through that window is a square foot of sky and the wall of the orthopedic wing. Yes, I was thinking I'd probably go for a walk when I leave here before it gets dark. Give me a chance to stretch my legs. Oh, typical. You haven't been here two minutes and you're talking of leaving already. Uh, haven't you brought me anything today? Oh, yes, yes, I have. This is a shopping bag here full of things. Yes. Magazines and some of those peppermint chocolates you like. Oh, thank you. Uh, what's in that tissue paper? <laughs> you're as bad as Jeremy. What have you brought me? You sound like a small boy. Do I? Oh, very strange. I believe I was asleep when you came in. I've been dreaming. Well, why not? I was dreaming we were back at Newbury. Years ago. I was dreaming about my father. Tea up, Matt. Hmm? Oh, well. Put it down there, will you? Yeah. 
not still working. Just checking these figures on the Christmas dinners. You and your Christmas dinners. I still think it was a very bizarre idea. Don't talk so daft. It was a brainwave. Do you realise how much profit we'll have made out of that bizarre idea of mine? Come Boxing Day? No, but I'm sure you're going to tell me. Here's your tea. Don't spill it. Enough for you and me to take a bit of a winter break, my love. That's how much. How do you fancy a flying visit to the Canary Islands for a long weekend in the middle of January, eh? You're not serious. I tell you, those frozen Christmas dinners are a little gold mine. Next year we'll start earlier. Go in for them in a really big way. Oh, how do the Canary Islands grab you, eh? It's a lovely idea, Matt. You can't possibly go away now. Why well, not? Well, I couldn't leave the restaurant. And Sophie needs me around for a while. Oh, bloody was. How much longer is she going to be... Put your voice down. Sorry. Where is she now? Having a lie down. I gave her the Sunday papers to read. Oh, thanks very much. I suppose by the time I get round to them, they'll all be crumpled and creased and back to front. You are the most self-centred, impossible man I ever met in my entire life. I know, but I'm lovely with it. Aren't you going to give her ladyship a cup of tea? I offered her one, but she said she'd have it later. I think she's probably trying to be tactful and keep out of our way. Yeah, well, she probably realises as well as we do. We can't go on like this forever. Well, of course, it won't be forever. But as long as she needs a place to stay... This house isn't big enough for us and Alexis and Sophie. It seemed to be big enough for us and Alexis and Bill, I noticed. Oh, that was different. Men don't take up so much space. Oh, Matt. Now, listen. Seriously, I am not going to turn Sophie out. When she's ready to go, fine, she can go. But until then... What you don't realise, my love, is that she's ready to go now. Her problem is she doesn't know where to go next. Oh, Oh, well. There ought to be a law against people ringing up on a Sunday. It's probably for me. I asked Peter to let me know how his father is. He was going to visit him this afternoon. Come in, Mr Tyson. Come in out of the cold. Thank you, Mr Tully. Oh, I'm not interrupting, am I? Looks as if you're hard at work. Paperwork. Not my idea of fun. I can't seem to fight my way through it. (laughs) I was just taking a walk along the towpath, and I thought I'd look in on the off chance. Uh, By rights, I should be at home with my feet up. But there it is. These blooming accounts have got to be sorted out sometime. I can't have them hanging over me all through Christmas. (laughs) Quite right. And how's that lad of yours, young Jeremy? Oh, he's fine. He'll be very cross if he finds out I've been visiting the boatyard without him. You must bring him round to see us one day when we're working. Not that there's much to see this time of year. Well, I don't suppose Jeremy'd care. It's the place itself that fascinates him. I can understand that. Messing about with boats. I know what you mean. It's probably why I'm no great shakes at this paperwork. VAT and that. I'm more at home out there in the yard, out of doors. VAT, did you say? Aye. I suppose that sort of thing's child's play to you, eh? Well, I'm no expert, but, um... Look, look, Mr. Tyson. I don't want to take up your time. But if I was to brew up a pot of tea, you don't suppose you could just sort of, uh, cast your eye over these accounts for me, do you? Have you been talking to Peter all this time? Uh, it wasn't Peter, unfortunately. It was the woman who's taking 250 Christmas dinners. Ah, God bless her, I say. Does she want some more? No, she just rang to cancel the order. What? But they're all made up, ready for delivery. I know. Apparently she's changed her plans. She's flying to Bermuda for Christmas instead, and she's called off her party. But she can't do that. Didn't you tell her that? Oh, I tried. But unless we're prepared to take her to court and sue, there's no way to shift her. God, that's downright criminal. She seemed to think as they're frozen, we could just put them back in stock and keep them till next Christmas. Twelve months in storage, not a hope. <sighs> I only just have to shift them, that's all. Between now and Christmas Eve, we've got to get rid of 250 roast turkey dinners with Christmas pud and brandy sauce and all the trimmings. <laughs> And you can hear the next episode of Wagner's Walk tomorrow afternoon at five past five.